Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play You Don't Know Jack. My name is WW Dadman, but you already know that. And we are continuing. Ahoy there! Ah, going for a little nighttime sail, eh? Nighttime? So, uh, how many buccaneers we got? Just me. Okay, type in your old name there, and uh, we'll get you on your um, sad, just, pathetic, just, scurvy way. Just to, to tell you something, it's... 8:45 p.m. Right, How is that night time? Give me a name and give me one quick. How is that night time? You're Please, so for Squawky's sake, type in your name. She's going crazy. As if I care about your fucking parrot. Arr, you know what? I've got a name for you, Maggot Pie. Mm. Your buzzer is the B key. I know. As in Briny deep. Arr, now here's how things they are going to work. Now, you use your buzzer to buzz in and then hit a one, two, three, or four if it's a multiple choice question, or you start typing with your hook on your hand if it's a fill in the blank. Pretty easy, eh? And uh, that be it. So, uh, you did well on your last game, so keep it up and I'll be free yet. And to help you out, I'll be adding a little something extra to this game, so best of luck to you. Arr. Thank you. So, there's no I in team. There's no I in Cyclops either, interesting. Ah! Yeah, welcome to You Don't Know Jack. Just me and you this time around, huh? Hey, what does that say that nobody else wanted to hang out with you? Damn, what does it say about me? Okay, put down the instruction manual. It's time to get started. Tell me which category you want. Uh, Dad. Your category is sick and tired of being sick and tired. This one can net you four grand. Think fast. It's question time. Which of these invaders has been thrown back for good? Measles, mumps, polio, or smallpox? As of a few years ago, our friends at the World Health Organization said that smallpox is basically wiped out. <laughs> oh, sure, a few vials of it still exist here and there. You know, for research and the inevitable smallpox nostalgia craze that'll hit in about 10 years. Sure. Tell me which category you want. Nostalgia. Let's take a look at... Uh, thanks. I'll just have the salad. This baby's gonna get you $26,606.06. And I'll totally lock up the question, the answer. You know, if you filter out the piratey babble and the strange, spooky reverb, the music is actually pretty catchy. I wonder where somebody might get a CD or something like that. Hmm. Oh well. Pirates ate a mixture of meats, cabbage, anchovies, mangoes, eggs, and pickled vegetables. What was it called? Smorgasbord, Salmagundi, Gallimaufry, or Lutefisk? Um. I have a. Um. I have a, a suggestion what it might be, but <sighs> Lutefisk is Norwegian um, dried whitefish, codling, or and burbot as is also used, treated with lye. Uh, yeah. So that's essentially very, very base uh, heavy stuff. So the exact opposite of sour fermentation. Uh, there is no other stuff in that though. That's just fish. Um, 
what was the next one? Gally Moffry. Gally Moffry. Definition by Merriam Webster. Stew made from various meats. That does sound like that's something. That does sound a bit like that's what we want here. So I'm going to really quickly read the other thing. Um, sorry that this takes a bit, but... Uh, the first one is a range of open sandwiches, so that's definitely not something that was pretty obvious because of the however you actually pronounce the last part of the word. It sounds very similar to bread. Uh, and that's Selma Gandhi or something like that. Um... Selma Gundi. Selma Gundi. Selma Gundi is a 17th century salad comprised of cooked meat, seafood, vegetables, fruits, leaves, nuts, and flowers. Meat, cabbage, and chilies, mangoes, eggs, vegetables. So it's either Selma Gundi or. Does that have meats? Meat, seafood, yeah, vegetables, fruits, leaves, nuts, flowers, oil, and vinegar. So it's essentially a salad. Versus the Gallimaufry, which is not that. So I'm I'm going to go with the second one. Well, hey, you got it. Nice. How the hell did you know Salama Gundi? You guessed, didn't you? There's no way you would know that. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to get down with these funky jams. Oh yeah. Ha ha ha. Argmate, argmate, argmate. Yeah. Pick a category. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, chest strut fits dime whore. Fuck uh, you. Time for a liver punch past queen. Let's go this one. I am the smell of fear. We're gonna start this question out at ten thousand dollars. Okay, as soon as you've figured out what this gibberish phrase rhymes with, buzz in, because I'll be taking away some cash every second and a half. Okay, tell me, with what famous person's name does this rhyme? Him a flea, fear me. Him oh, a flea, and don't fear get too me. hung up on the punctuation, okay? 
Timothy Leary. You want it? You can. Not bad for a player with eight tentacles and a giant turnip for a head. I'm Fuck fine. you too. I'm fine. How about picking a category? <laughs> uh. And I believe this one's called Danger. Ill-advised speedo ahead. Too grand for this baby. Uh oh, looks like the bullies are kicking sand on the 98 pound weakling again. Oh no, they're dumping a bunch of sand down his swim trunks. <laughs> How Gross. embarrassing. If the heat and pressure were to get really intense down there, what could happen to the sand in the 98 pound weakling's trunks? It'd turn gelatinous, it'd implode, it'd turn into glass, or it'd evaporate. Too much heat and pressure put on sand turns it into glass. Easy. <laughs> Finally, a reason to take off your clothes on spring break. Woo! Time <laughs> to choose a category. I might get glass in my ass if I don't. That's a really good fucking reason. For your enjoyment, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Bette Midler. 4,000 bucks if you get this. Say, did you ever know that you're my hero? You're everything I wish I could be? That I can fly higher than an eagle because you are the wind beneath my wings? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> okay. If you really lift me up by being the wind beneath my wings, what effect are you having on me? The Bernoulli effect, the Coriolis effect, the Doppler effect, or the Faraday effect? So, Coriolis effect is the one that has the um, storms rotate counterclockwise on one side of the earth and clockwise on the other because that's uh, something that's something that's the, the um, inertia introduced by the earth spinning and the equator having to spin faster to get uh, to, to travel the same distance as the poles do or something near the poles <laughs> so that's not it. The Doppler effect is the one where um, an oncoming car has a higher sound and a car that's going away from you has a lower sound. I have no idea what the Faraday effect is. And the Bernoulli effect... Bernoulli, Bernoulli, Bernoulli... I think Bernoulli would be the one with the lift. Your Bernoulli effect inspires me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank God for you. The wind beneath my wings that creates lift due to the difference in pressure from that wind which is above my wings. <laughs> Go ahead, pick one of these. Ah, uh, good. I don't think Faraday has an effect named after him. This one's called Strolling Down Memory Card Lane. This one's worth $6,000. Hey, do you remember when that evil supercomputer called Deep Blue beat world champion Gary Kasparov in chess? Well, check this out. I've got a copy of the press conference afterwards. Listen. I could not have achieved this victory without the inspiration of one of my fellow computers, that checkers champion, my friend and mentor. Oh. Oh, crap! The tape got eaten! I got to know what's the name of the computer Deep Blue was referring to! Pale Blue, Hell, Chinook, or Eniac? Look, this player is about as fast as a Commodore 64. I hate you too. I have no fucking clue about chess computers. I could have given you some cash if you picked this one. Deep Blue was still in short pants, Chinook was beating humans at checkers in the early and mid-90s. And, if I'm not mistaken, back in the 60s, there was a clock radio that could beat the pants off of anybody at a game of tic-tac-toe. Go ahead, pick a category. Uh... Welcome to the Jack Attack. Hi. Pay close attention to the items on the screen. Buzz in on a correct match and you win. Buzz in on an incorrect match, you lose. I know. And try to remember. Remember the clue. Your match better fit this clue.
There seems to be an or between us. Enjoy. Paper. Uh, or plastic. Trick or a treat. Box of briefs. Mac or Windows. Regular or diet. No idea then. Take it, leave it. To be or not to be. I have no fucking clue. That one? Oh, decaf. Well, have mercy. You annihilated that attack. Let's check out what it did to your score. There it is. Wow, that was an intense game. That was really thrilling. You were by far the best player we had. Now give I'm me also a the only player. To your left. Now look to your right and repeat after me. You don't know Jack. You don't know Jack. <laughs> and we're gonna go right for the next game. How many buccaneers we got? Just me. Yep. Excellent. Yeah, I know. Oh, heave all everybody. We got a live one here. Uh, let's not keep them waiting. Loading, loading, loading. Keep those dot that files loading. Oh, hi. Do I need to get that? Hello there, this is You Don't Know Jack. I'm Schmitty, and you are playing by yourself. Don't worry, nothing to be ashamed of. I've tried it. And we're off. Time to select a category. Um... Allow me to introduce... Fire when you see the whites of their painted eyes. This one's worth 2,000 simoleons. Hey, do you remember when Cabbage Patch Kids came out and everybody no. was freaking out at the stores trying to get one? Well, suppose the crowds at America's malls turned violent while vying for Cabbage Patch Kids. Since he was president when Cabbage Patch Kids were introduced, who could have sent in the troops? Bill Clinton, George Herbert Walker Bush, Ronald Reagan, or Jimmy Carter? Heck if I know, Carter. No, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Jimmy Carter sent troops into Iran in 1980 when they were holding Mr. Peanut hostage. <laughs> the correct answer is... Cabbage Patch dolls were introduced in 1983 during Reagan's reign. But very that was few close. people know about Reagan's secret deal. Coleco releases more dolls and funnels the proceeds to a ragtag band of G.I. Joe figures who fight to overthrow Cobra. <laughs> Time to make a choice. Mm. Up next, let me see your facets, baby. How does $4,000 sound? Okay, let's go. Which of these exotic dancer gemstones would have the hardest body? The sensuous jade, the voluptuous lapis lazuli, the stunning sapphire, or the gorgeous amber? Uh... Sapphire? Sapphire is one little hard body. Why, she's a nine on the mineral hardness scale. Yeah? <laughs> Yeah, I know, but that's you, literally only beat by diamond. She really likes you because you're so different from all the others. So, what's it gonna be? Heck, am I glad that I had some uh, geology nut in my as, as a well, like what do we uh, have here? colleague in my trousers, summer job? Bad boy, and you pocket four thousand bucks if you get this one right. Pencils ready, let's do it. Which of the super friends would most likely get kitted for shopping at a store called Big and Really Friggin' Tall? Samurai, Green Lantern, Aquaman, or Apache Chief? Uh, heck if I know. Oops, 
no time left. Let me show you what I would have picked. Apache Chief had the superpower to grow extremely tall, which doesn't make his mother very happy. Why, he's grown out of three pairs of dungarees just this year. Oh, well, superheroes will be superheroes. And uh, boring again, superpowers will be boring superpowers. Well, look at you. You've just chosen a dis or dat. Good. This dis or dat category name is Diamond Dave is watching you. All right, I'm going to rattle off seven things here, and for each one, I'd like you to tell me if it's something from George Orwell's novel, 1984, or a song from Van Halen's album, 1984. As each one appears, if it's from the Gee, Orwellian, I've 1984... I've never one, read 1984, and I don't know a lot of Van Halen songs. And to skip it, press four. A thousand clams coming to you for each one don't you blame get right. Me. And a thousand bucks goes away for the ones you miss or you don't finish. All right, I'm going to start you off with 30 seconds on the clock. It's showtime. Big Brother. Top chip. Double plus. Junior. Ministry. One more. So you got five right. How's it feel to be just about average? Let's see your new score. Wow, that was really exciting. I guess that was well, to be expected. Uh, expected. 50-50 chance and all. Um. Here's a little something I call, can I be frank, Thomas? This one can net you four grand. See what you can do with this one. As of the 2001 season, where does the big hurt swing his big bat? The Big Apple, the city of big shoulders, the big easy, or big sky country? He said 2001 and it says 2003. Jellyvision, fix your games. Seriously? Heck if I know. <laughs> hey, if you got a minute, take a look at this. My close personal friend Frank Thomas plays for the Chicago White Sox in, you guessed it, Chicago. The town formerly known as the city of really crappy baseball teams. Time to choose a category. Get yourself ready for Red Rover, Red Rover, let a monsoon come over. $2,000 at stake on this one. Put it in gear, cause here we go. If a giant game of Twister determined where tornadoes strike, which of these spins would have come up least often? Left foot, Oklahoma. Right hand, Hawaii. Left hand, Nebraska. Or right foot, Florida. Tornado! <laughs> Here's the one the winners pick. Of these four states, Hawaii oh. has been hit with the fewest tornadoes. However, Hawaii, Hawaii has, has less tornadoes than frickin' Nebraska. Jokes. Pick a category. Okay. All rise. The Jack Attack is now in session. And I know you all about You should already this. know how this works. All you need is to get a clue. It's what's inside that counts. Unless, of course, you have a face like yours. Shut up! Heck, if I know those aren't around here. But I'm gonna assume nuts. Or nougat. I don't know. What are those? Oh, you mean like ant mounts? Roller caramel. Please, peanut butter cup. Peanut butter? Ah! I hate you. Hello, cup. No idea. Marshmallow. Whoopers? Whoppers? What? what? Score? That was a wild guess. 
Fuck you. I hate you. Hey, you might have done some real damage if you pulled your fingers out of your ass. Let's see what happened to your score. That's the game. Hey, good game. Good player. That game had everything except competition and a really good score. You know, maybe your friends were right when they told me. You don't know, Jack. Well, you gotta make up for for uh, actually getting a whole lot of money done in the um, first one. Either way, I'll see you in the next episode next Sunday. Till then, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more. And until next time, I'm WW Deadman.